Things that you might want to use a fast attack on are really the base. If you have a bass player that plays really inconsistently, you're going to want to have a fast attack time because a lot of times that initial transients are really inconsistent. You'll see these spikes all over the place. You can just look at the track in your DAW and say, oh, that's really inconsistent because you can see this transients. Or acoustic guitar, same thing. If you want to really level out that sound, the, the pick attack, and make it much more consistent and punchy, actually, a fast attack really works. Same thing with synth sounds. If you have really quick transients on the sounds, a fast attack will make the thing jump out of the mix a lot of times. Now vocals, a lot of times when I'm tracking vocals, I'll use two compressors. This is on the tracking part of it. I'll use one compressor to kind of slow down the transients because you don't want your vocals to be jumping all over. Now you can go through and ride these things and you might not want your vocal to be compressed really at all. But a lot of times you want that sound. So sometimes I'll have a compressor set at a really slow setting, like a two to one ratio with a slow attack time. But then I'll have another one set with a higher ratio behind it with a fast attack time. Okay, but I won't have the input up as high. So only certain peaks, they'll grab that. So it'll grab any really loud transients. So you don't have to go back through and ride these things in the mix all the time. You don't want to be going up and ride hand riding every single attack if you don't have to. Sometimes you have to do that. You'll know just by looking at the waveforms what have the really sharp transients. Things like drums though, I like to use a slow attack time because I want those transients to come through. That's what gives you your attack, that's what gives you your aggressiveness and your punch, the slow attack times. So your release time is how fast the compressor lets go of the sound, how quickly it lets go of it. If you want to get that Led Zeppelin when the levee breaks sound, So you can hear the difference between the dry and compressed room. When I go to the compressed sound, I'm using a high compression ratio, about 20 to one, and I have the release time set just right so that it has that pumping that you wanna hear and gives you that Led Zeppelin sound. A great time to use a long release time on your compressor is when you have a bass note that dies off too fast. Notice how the first note tapers off. Check out the second bass note that's been compressed with a high ratio of six to one and a long release time. You notice how this bass note here tapers off, but you see how fat the back end of this, be that's what the compression is doing. This fat back end here is making the note have a lot more sustain and amplitude so the bass does not drop off and taper like it does here. So you use that compressor to hold up the back end of the note and keep it steady so that your low end doesn't dissipate. Your attack and release times are really crucial on the mix bus. Most mixers will put set the mix bus at a four to one ratio. And if you're using an SSL compressor, which has pretty much been the standard, I'm talking plug-in or if you're mixing on a console, that's pretty much been the standard of, for mixing as a mix bus compression for the last 30 years, 35 years. With the exception of Chris Lord Algae that uses a Focusrite red compressor on his mix bus. The attack time will vary, usually from 1 to 10 milliseconds. And the release time, if you're using an SSL compressor, most mixers, whether it's a plug-in, Waves has one, Universal Audio has one, SSL makes one, there's many different G Plus compressors that are out there in the plug-in world. Most mixers use the auto release. The same goes for the Allen Smart C2, if you have the hardware unit or a software emulation of it. That, that's just a copy of the G-Series compressor by SSL. Or the Focusrite Red 3. That's the compressor Chris Lord LG uses. He will use the auto release on that as well. The attack time will vary really dependent on what you're mixing, what the tempo is, how punchy you want to make it. If you have slower attack times, you're going to get more punch. But sometimes you want that compressor to grab things and glue it together so you use a faster attack time. As far as the emulations of the SSL G Plus compressor, Steven Slate makes one, UAD makes one, Waves makes one, and SSL makes one. I've tried them all. They're all fairly similar. 
I've actually put them on the mix bus. I've matched the input to where you're getting the exact same gain reduction. And they're pretty similar. Um, I like SSLs a lot. I like UADs a lot. But, you know, I own all of them. So, you know, sometimes I'll do a mix and I'll go from song to song and I'll use a different uh, SSL bus compressor on it. So it's really a kind of a personal taste and it's dependent on the song anyways. Now, I'd like to take a second to talk to you about this channel. This is actually Rick Beato 2. I've had it since the beginning of my main channel and many of you are not subscribed. As a matter of fact, 87% of the people that watch this channel regularly are not subscribed. So I would encourage you to hit the subscribe button on this channel and on my main channel. This will help me get better guests and help continue to grow both of these channels. Thank you. Now I've been talking about all these compressors, but we haven't even discussed types of compressors. You've heard a lot of these terms like optical or opto compressor. Your standard optical compressors that are most commonly seen in plug-in form or in hardware units, the LA-2A by Teletronics or Universal Audio has a great emulation of it. The LA-3A, TubeTech CL1B, that's a really common compressor that's used in Nashville. Every time I go up there, people use it to track with vocals and things like that. It's great on bass. These things are great on bass. LA-2A, incredibly great. Daniel Lenoir, who's a phenomenal producer, produced Peter Gabriel's records. He produced U2's, many of their records. He uses it on everything, on vocals, guitars, you name it. Chris Lord LG, this is kind of his go-to compressor, LA-3A for electric guitars. If you're looking for something that's gonna grab really quick transients, that's not the compressor to use. LA-2A though, on a bass, anything that has low end, like a bass guitar, Killer, sounds great. The FET compressor, field effect transistor. Well, the main one that everyone knows is the UA1176. It's probably the most common compressor and most widely used compressor in any genre of music. Both in the hardware form and the software form, there are great emulations. I own the Waves ones, I own the uh, Bomb Factory, I own the UAD ones. I like the UAD ones. I like the fact that they are the ones that did their own modeling of their own hardware. I think they sound fantastic. These are very colored sounding and they're not transparent, which means the same thing. These are very colored sounding. I, says, I say not transparent, well, it means the same thing. Um, they start with a four to one ratio. They have super fast attack and release times. The 1176 is a bit confusing to people regarding the attack and release time because they're actually backwards from what you would think. The fastest attack is seven and the fastest release is seven on it. So all the way to the right. For, for tracking vocals, go-to compressor right there. Killer sounding. At the bottom here, the VCA compressor. Voltage controlled amplifier, SSL G+. Or you can find a rack unit 384, it's called. The Neve 33609 compressor limiter. These are mixed bus compressors. They're mastering compressors. They're great at handling program information, meaning they're great at handling mixes. If you can afford the, the real ones, you'd be psyched. But the emulations are fantastic. I have... Uh, the Waves ones, I have the UAD ones on both of these. I love the UAD version of the 33609 here. This is really a, um, a killer compressor. And it, it's actually a lot more versatile than the SSL bus compressor because you can use that on other things. And because of the limiting function, because it has a compressor and a limiter with it, it's, it's really, really useful. The fourth compressor design is the Variable MU. It's an older design of gain control that used a rebiased vacuum tube for its gain reduction. They actually lack a traditional threshold and ratio, but rely on input and output controls to drive the compressor. The most common kind that you see and think of is the Fairchild 660 or 670. The 660 is a mono unit, 670 is a stereo unit. Think of the Beatles, think of Pink Floyd, things like that. That these are incredibly rich sounding compressors. They're incredibly expensive. The emulations are very good that are made of them. A lot of companies make emulations of plugins. EMI made their own compressor to emulate in a hardware form 
the uh, Fairchild. It's called the EMI TG12413. That's the Abbey Road compressor. And those are incredibly good sounding. Chandler makes a copy called the TG1, and it's one of my favorite compressors ever. It's really expensive hardware unit, but it's unbelievable on drum room mics. It is so fat. You can take the, the weakest sounding drum room sound, put it through that, and all of a sudden you sound like Led Zeppelin. The Manly Variable MU is also, it's named after this, of course, and it's a really great sounding compressor. Two words I would use to describe this, glue and rich sounding. These, these are really rich sounding. They add a lot of harmonic distortion information to them, and they really make your mix sound fat and glue it together. You have to experiment with them, especially with the input and output controls, to get them to compress just how you want it to. But if you can ever afford a real Fairchild, they're phenomenal.